So you're telling me that Eric Northman is going to play the Northman? I'm in. Hey guys, my name is Alan Fox. Welcome to my channel. And today my grandfather was watching the news when I came across the trailer of The Northman. And my grandfather is really into like historic movies and TV shows. So he was immediately like, what's this about? So I was like, it's about this, you know, kid who is going to rent his father or something like that. Nothing really interesting. And that's when I saw the cast list and it said Alexander Skarsgård. And I was like, and then it said Bill Skarsgård. And I was like, like... The, the Skarsgård brothers in the same movie. You have you have my entire undivided attention. Let's watch this trailer. Now, behold. He's here. He's here. The king, my lady. The king. Your fate is set and you cannot escape it. How oh, I've missed you, my son. One day this kingdom will be yours. Thank you, father. My king. <laughs> I have the cunning to break their minds. And night by night, we will carry out my pledge of vengeance. I will avenge you, father. I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, father. That is a very good trailer. <laughs> oh my god, I just love Viking movies or barbarians or even Saxons. I, I think I love history just as much as my grandfather does, though I don't watch as many movies and TV shows as he does. He's, he's obsessed. So, um, quick question, where's Bill Skarsgård? Because I don't see him. Either he's not here or I'm blind and I really hope it's not the latter because I don't want to be blind. He's here. He's here. Now oh, I've missed you, my son. One day this kingdom will be yours. The thing that caught my attention right off the bat was the fact that the father and the son are really close. This is something that in most historic shows does not exist. The love between the father and the son. Like... They show us a king, a ruler, and his heir, and they, he literally feels nothing towards the boy. So I think it's really great to see a king who actually loves his son, who's like, oh my god, my son! Like, people generally love their children. And to not love your heir, that does not make sense. So I think it's really refreshing to see someone who actually loves their child for once. The king, my lady. The king. Nicole Kidman is such a beautiful human and to top that off, in every single movie and TV show they give her this makeover that just makes me want to love her even more. Like, my god, like in Aquaman, her getup was so stunning. She was like so bright and so... 
colorful and so innocent at the same time. And then they always make her like the mother of this like really old man, like Jason Momoa and now Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But she looks so beautiful as that. She does not look like she's their mother, but she does look really, really stunning. Like in, um, I guess, Nine Perfect Strangers. I would have trusted her. No joke, I would have trusted her. She could have screamed in my face like a maniac and I would have still trusted her. And even now she looks so beautiful. She looks every bit the queen that she's like, gosh, she's so full of light. She's so pale and so full of color at the same time. It doesn't make sense, but I guess I just don't know how to describe her beauty. Father. And that is why I always say that a sword might be sexier but a bow and arrow is the ultimate thing. Or a pike, because I think they used a pike, but like, they're so effective. They're like guns. You can shoot someone and kill someone from so far away while defending yourself. Unless, you know, the person in front of you also has a bow and arrow, but like, you, you can't really fight the facts here. I know the swords are really sexy and that's why every king has them. And maybe they just like to have swords, but like bow and arrow is supreme. I will kill you, Fiona! I will avenge you, father. I think Bill is going to play the Northman. Like, so the boy's going to grow up to be Bill Skarsgård, and then when he's older, he's going to be played by Alexander. Alexander's around, like, 40, I think. So, 45 or something. So, he's the Northman. They did not give us his name. He's going to take a long time to avenge his father, which is good, because it's not as if, in every single movie, the boy like turns 19 is like, okay, time for revenge. You need to do a couple of other things and like be powerful enough before you get the revenge. So I think to be 45 or 50 and that's when you finally are able to get your revenge. That makes a lot of sense because you have like 45 years to build yourself into this human being, to have enough power to make an army, you know? So I'm never in support of the... 19 year old Avenger thing, but 45, that's that's a very decent age. To find what was stolen from me. And what is that? The kingdom. God, I love their accents. <laughs> Imagine asking someone, what was stolen from you? And they're like, a kingdom. You're the ultimate chat. A, a kingdom? What? A, a kingdom? Like sometimes you do ask someone something and their answer is a thing so big that you're like, wow, wow. Like, yes, like a few days back, I was watching um, the King's Man trailer and they were like, this guy, he started the World War One. And I was like, can you imagine telling someone that I started a world war? That is impressive. I mean, we have to be honest here. It is impressive. Gavrilo Princip. Weakness? Throwing arm. Strength? Started World War One. Your strength breaks men's bones. I have the cunning to break their minds. Night by night. God, you can see the insanity, the poverty, and the regalness all in one movie. Anya Taylor-Joy never fails to impress you. Like, you can see the madness she felt when she was like, I can twist their minds. And then she put on this, like, sort of twig crown, brown sort of crown and... What? <laughs> she put on that, like, crown thingy and you could be like, she's a queen. And then before, she was a slave and she really pulls off every single look. And it's not just her costume, it's her overall facial expressions. Like, you can see it on her face. She is such an amazing actress and I've never appreciated her enough because I have not watched The Queen's Gambit yet. And night by night, we will carry out my pledge of vengeance. I don't recall the last time I saw someone in like wolf skin or like any sort of animal skin because leather is animal skin, but like we, we call it leather. It's like refined and everything. So all the Vikings that I've been coming across and all the other historic shows, they have been wearing way too much leather for my liking. I think it's so cool to see someone like a wolf skull. It's so cool. I don't even recall the last time I saw someone in like a lion head. Like, I guess it was 
Commodus in Reign of Blood. And he too wore it for like two minutes and then he took it off. So it's so cool to see someone fight in it. Like, Hercules vibes, yes, come in. I will avenge you, father. I will avenge you, father. He threw a pike. It's so cool if he kills the, the, the other king with a pike, just like his father was killed. Well, he wasn't exactly killed through the pike, but like he attacks with the pike and then he beheads him like his father was. That would be perfection. Please do it, please do it, please do it. I will save you, mother. I will save you, mother. So that begs the question, is the mother still alive? And if she is, I really hope that she's in good condition because what will you do of a mother who has lost it? I will kill you, Philip. He's like Arya Stark. Cersei, Joffrey, Hound. Which I thought was so cool. I mean, she was literally chanting it like it, it's a prayer. And I still haven't watched the entire Game of Thrones, so please don't spoil it for me. <laughs> I must ask, why do these battles never take place during daytime? On a sunny day? It's always raining, it's really cloudy, like they always make everything so dark like i have to literally watch the movie on like full brightness otherwise i won't see a thing <laughs> i think this is i i just don't like it i like colorful things okay so movies like sorry tv shows like the witcher and game of thrones and the lost kingdom and bloody vikings everything is so dark it is a good storyline i know but i just like need more color i think that's like the one thing that made me watch The Wheel of Time, it is so colorful, you cannot help loving it. This is, again, this is so dark. I know you're making a dark movie, but the sets don't need to be dark. Please, please give me more color. I'm, I'm tired of these colorless movies. Just make them black and white. What does it matter? The Northman looks like the Northman. <laughs> and that's it. That was it for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like, also comment below. And let me know your very first Alexander Scott's movie or Anya Taylor Joy or Bill Scott's God. It's all up to you. You can leave anything in the comments as long as it's not strongly offensive because then YouTube will delete your comment. <laughs> um, subscribe, click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload. And also check out my edits channel. I have a couple of Alexander Scott's God edits on there. And do I have anyone else there? Many people. Go and check it out. Also, check out my Instagram. It's at Elena underscore Fox. And yeah, that is it. I'm the only other fox in this world. And my very first Alexander Skarsgård movie was The Legend of Tarzan. And ever since, I've been completely in love. Because I grew up, my grandfather used to read Tarzan um, stories to me and my brother when we were little. And when I grew up and I saw The Legend of Tarzan, it was exactly out of my imagination like that is exactly how i fantasized tarzan to be and do you know fun fact people actually wanted alexander skarsgård to play christian gray let me know your thoughts on that and bye